Okay, the next thing that we wanna go over with POP3 is how to get a complete scan. There's two options. The first option, simply scanning the side and the top of the rock. But of course, then how do we get the bottom? You simply pause, flip it over, make sure you start where you've previously have some point clouds so that the software can capture that and then gradually move to the area that you haven't scanned yet, the bottom, which would then be on the top because we flip it. The next option within the software, you can choose the merging option. It's also similar. So you would scan again the side and the top of the rock, save that scan, start a new scan, flip over the rock, scanning what now would be the bottom, save that, and then we can merge it within the software. But let's first go over the first option. Here we go. And make sure you have it on high speed because this is a rather large object for um, POP3. <laughs> Forgot what I'm talking about for a second. This is POP3, we got so many scanners, but it's really nice. You can with high speed use that because it gives you a larger view. All right, let's go. Okay, so just pause it. We have a nice example, a good amount of point clouds captured on the top and the sides. So just flip it over. And now again, make sure you don't just start here, but was the bottom because there's no previous information in the software that would make you have tracking loss. Make sure you start, start from an area that you previously scanned and the software should pick it up just fine. So I'm gonna let it rotate, rotate it around, quarter turn, and try it out. And just be patient with it, there he goes. Found it. So now that we have previous point clouds, we can move this up into unknown territory. fully scan the bottom of the rock. And pause it, there we go. Complete. And we have our solid rock. For editing, let's just run it through one-click editing. Okay, very nice. Look at that beautiful rock. So that was the first option, again, for getting a complete scan. Just making sure you quick review, capture the sides and the top fully, pause it, flip it over, start where you previously scanned, and the software will pick it up and get the part that is not, hasn't been scanned yet. So for our second option, let's talk about merging now. Okay, so for the point of demonstrating this issue, I just added two new scans of this. This little guy, head one and head two. So, and I also ran them through Fusion, but I wanna point this out to you now. When I go to merge, because previously, when I just had the two saved rocks, the merge option wasn't even illuminated. I couldn't even click on it. So now I scanned the head twice. We have two head scans. They've both been ran through Fusion. But if I click on merge now, notice what's going on. I still can't select the two rocks that I've saved. So let's go back and it's an easy fix. All you have to do is run those two rocks through the fusion processing, the fusion editing. So click on the first sample, fusion. And notice here, this is also important to keep in mind, point distance is at 79. When you're editing the two, keep the point distance at the same. So it's at 79 right now. We'll apply that. And we also, this isn't necessary, but we can also run through isolation. Actually only what's necessary is just do the fusion editing and then we can merge the two. And then with our new model, we can go through the whole process. But just for the sake of it, let's also edit 
with isolation, detect and apply. And we'll also do overlap, detect and apply. And we'll stop there for that model. And we'll now go to our second rock model, run it through fusion. And remember the previous point distance was at 79. This one's set at 62. So let's turn that up to 79. Apply. Very good. And we'll run it through isolation as well. Detect, apply, and overlap too. Okay, so now we have those two samples of the rock, both ran through fusion. Now if we go to merge, notice what happens. Click on merge and it allows you to select them. So just simply click the two boxes. And this is feature alignment. So pretty much the software through the different features are gonna merge this rock top and bottom. Another option is marker much more technical. So notice if I click the two, you would have to physically put the marker dots around in the, on the specimen, on the rock itself, and then merge it. So pretty technical, but let's just run feature this time. So preview the alignment. Looking pretty good. Let's generate our new model now. Cool, turned out pretty well. And now, as you remember, with both the top scan and the bottom scan, we only ran it through fusion, isolation, and overlap. Let's complete the whole process now by meshing it. So now we can, as you can see in our model icon area, we can select our merge and run that through mesh. So apply that. Isolation, fill hole, cool. And that is our fully scanned rock, merging both the top and the bottom. Turned out great. Okay, we just got done using POP3 scanning the stone completely, top and bottom sides and everything by merging it using feature mode. Now we wanna go over how to use marker mode and how to get a complete scan. So we're gonna use this muffler here. And something I just wanna bring out, it's tricky because the, the body of the muffler isn't a big deal with marker mode. It's actually really easy, but where you get to, it gets to be a little difficult is these narrow areas. So it's something I wanna suggest to you if you're ever scanning something of a similar size, the smaller marker dots really come in handy on these narrow, hard to reach areas. So we have some normal size marker dots on here, but we also added the smaller ones for the real intricate parts. And that'll definitely help you get a complete scan with um, marker mode. Also, this is something that you should, you should keep in mind. Previously, in another video, we scanned a narrow, long sword and we had the magic mat down using marker mode. And that was great and everything. It works out really well. But the issue if we were gonna try to do this with magic mat, It'd be perfect at first, but then when it comes time to pause the scanner, rotate this and start out where you've left off and continue going, you're gonna have issue. Why? Because the system has already saved, obviously where the marker dots are on the muffler itself, but also according to the mat. So if you change its direction and the way it's laying down, that's gonna mess up the marker dots on the magic mat. So you'll have tracking loss. So, Make sure you don't do that. Only use the mat if you're literally just gonna be scanning the object and not flipping it. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so let's try this out. Hopefully I can get a first time with you. I'm gonna start with the body and move to the end. And I might even, while still running the scanner, move it a little bit to get around the tail or I might pause it. It's, it's gonna be a combination of both pausing, rotating, scan, pause, rotate again. That's gonna be the style I'm going about. Okay, 
let's try it out. Make sure you are on, we are on marker mode. Looks good. Marker tracking, yep. there we have it. So just without editing it, looking at the preview window, just looking at the point clouds, turned out really nice. But again, just stressing, you really just need, especially this narrow pipe area, you need patience, go slowly. If it loses, has tracking loss for a moment, don't panic, just maybe go back to an area where you have more feature, more marker dots, and the system will refine itself and then you can keep on going to the new areas. But yeah, all in all, this turned out really good. Of course, after we edit it, it'd get rid of this noise and everything and fill in the few holes that we see. But altogether, it was a nice scan.